Hello and welcome to this exciting adventure. We're thrilled to have you on board. In the next few minutes, we're about to embark on a journey like no other. The installation of Semaphore, the graphical user interface for Ansible. This is where we'll kickstart your journey to easily manage Ansible configurations and tasks. Today, we're honing in on a fundamental step. Installing Semaphore. Whether you're an Ansible enthusiast looking to simplify your automation workflows or a newcomer seeking a user-friendly interface for your tasks, you're in the right place. In this video, we'll guide you through the seamless installation process, covering all the crucial steps. We'll ensure that by the end you have Semaphore up and running, ready to transform your Ansible experience. This installation journey promises to be informative and empowering. You'll soon discover how Semaphore can make managing Ansible a breeze. Whether you're automating complex tasks or streamlining your configurations, Semaphore has got you covered. So, without further ado, let's dive into the installation process of Semaphore, the gateway to a more efficient, Ansible world. Get ready to make your automation tasks easier than ever before. Now, without further ado, allow me to introduce you to our Semaphore expert, Nico. Please note that Nico has a Dodecanese accent, but he speaks the Queen's English fluently. Over to you, Nico. Thank you, Josh. Hi there. Today we are installing Semaphore into an Ubuntu server VM running in our Proxmox server. The instructions can be found in our blog and the link to the blog can be found down below. If you open this link here, it will take you to this page. And in this page, you will get the instructions for installing Semaphore in different ways. You can use a snap installation, although we don't recommend that. The package manager is probably the best way to go. You, you also have a Docker installation you can do. And finally, they provide you with a binary file. So you can do a binary installation. Let's look at the package manager. So that is here. This is the instructions that we are basing our video, but we've added a bit more to it than what you'll find here. As if you go and run this exactly like it is here, it won't work. You need to do some things before. So let's go back to our procedure. So the first thing we need to do is we need to do an update. So let's do the or APT update. Now we need to add the MariaDB. We decided to use MariaDB as our database. You could use MySQL. It's the same thing. So we're adding the repository. Once we've done that, the next step is to add the client, copy that, and the server. So we are installing the MariaDB server and the MariaDB client. I'm just going to add one thing to this command, dash Y. Then it doesn't annoy me with yes prompts. I'm just going to say one. Right, we've done that. The next thing we want to do is a secure installation. We want to set the root passwords and to decide whether or not we're going to use root. So these are the settings we recommend you should use. I will do something different here, but that's, that's me. And that's because I'm not running on a production environment. This is a a home server test environment where I test software. For my root password, I'm going to give it a password of password. Yes. Change the root password. Yes. Let's give a new password. Password. Remove anonymous users, yes. Disallow root, no. On my home server, I want to be root. 
Remove test databases, yes. Reload the privilege tables, yes. Right, we've done that. We now need to connect to the database. So copy this command, paste. And now we want to run this command. The only thing is I don't like password there. I want to give it a better password. I suppose I could keep it with password. That's fine. Paste. Right. And then we need to flush the privileges. This is an important command in MySQL. If you create a user like I've done now and you've specified the password and you forget to do this, you lose the user and you don't set the password. So now the user has been saved with that password. And now we can exit from the database. We need to start the database, so let's run this command. It should be running, but I always run them in this sequence. And then we want to enable it. The reason for this is when we reboot the server, we want the database to start. And then finally, we want to see that we have set that up like that. Copy. Paste, enter, and we can see it's running, and somewhere here we can see that it's enabled. Now we're going to do the semaphore installation. Run this command again, apt update, copy, paste, it'll run very quickly, and run this command. So we're installing some of the software we use. One. Let's verify that we have Git installed. Now we want to install Ansible, and the first thing we want to do is add the repository. So let's clear the screen. Let's add the repository for Ansible. Press Enter. Now we need to do an update. Whenever you add a repository, you always need to do an APT update. Now we can install Ansible. Let's verify that Ansible is there. Now we will install Semaphore. As I mentioned earlier, the instructions are based on this. And this. Now you will notice that this is an older version of Ansible. So what we have done here is we've provided you with a link to the releases which takes you here. Now you need to use the stable release to so stay away from the betas. Here's a stable release 2.9.37. This is the one we chose at the time of creating this video. In your case there may be a later release that is stable. What we do is we take this number here and we replace that version with the stable version. And that's exactly what we did in our instruction. To save you time, there it is with the latest version. So now run this command. This is going to download a, de a DEB file. 
if you are not using Ubuntu, let's say Rocky Linux or Cent OS, then you will open this and just explore till you find the one you want. So there's a RPM file. You will probably use this RPM. We continue. Copy. Let's clear the screen. Paste. Press enter to download. Then run this command. Before I run it, I'll show you why. ls la. So there we have downloaded the deb file. We are now going to use this command here to deploy it into our server. Copy. Paste. And this will install it in our server. Right, we've done that. Now let's see what we have. If I say which semaphore, it should tell us where it's located. Let's clear the screen. So we can see it's in the user bin. So this is executable. It will run. And then semaphore version. I'm a bit uncomfortable with what these guys have done because we do have a convention in Linux that your parameter should be dash V if it's a single letter and double dash if it's a word. But anyway, they wrote the software and that's what you have to use. So there's the version. That means that we have now succeeded to get Semaphore installed. The next thing we are going to do is we're now going to set up Semaphore. These are the recommended responses you should use. Paste. And. So one for selecting MySQL. The database is fine. We can just press enter. Uh, the DB root. DB user is root, we can keep that. And the password, remember we made it password. So that's the root password for this test server. We can keep the default there, press enter. And we can do the same here, press enter. And here, press enter. And an email for alerts, no. Telegram alerts, no. Slack alerts, no. We're not going to use LDAP. Let's use the output directory in root. Username admin. Let's make the password admin as well. Just hang on. At gmail.com. Your name is Nico. And the password, we're going to make it admin. Admin. Many of the software systems that I've worked with use admin admin as user and password. Now it's telling us to run this command to run it as a daemon, which is exactly what we have as the next step. Copy. Paste. 
The server said it was running on port 3000 and to see that it was working from the same server I opened the console in Proxmox and I did a curl command HTTP localhost 3000 and you can see it opened the server. Now that I knew that, I then took the IP address of the server, which is 10.154.2.95. I added port 3000 and it brought me in. So I should now be able to say admin, admin. To sign in. So now we have succeeded to install semaphore and get it working we can create a demo project let's do that let's call this demo and create and with that i hand you back to josh thank you for joining us on this instructive journey in this presentation you've explored semaphore the graphical user interface for ansible here's a quick recap of what we've covered one Semaphore. Introduction. We introduced Semaphore, a user-friendly Ansible management tool. 2. Installation process. We guided you through the seamless installation of Semaphore, preparing you to streamline Ansible configurations and tasks effortlessly. Today's knowledge equips you to embrace Semaphore, enhancing your Ansible experience. If you found value in this video, consider subscribing to stay updated with our latest content and tutorials. Subscribing ensures you never miss out on informative videos. For those eager to deepen their knowledge, we invite you to become a Patreon supporter. This exclusive opportunity grants access to upcoming training courses, enriching your expertise while supporting the channel. Patreon supporters will receive exclusive access to our training courses, helping you stay at the forefront of technological advances. We genuinely appreciate your support and look forward to sharing more enriching content with you. Stay curious, keep exploring, and continue harnessing the remarkable potential that Semaphore offers in your Ansible automation journey. Thank you for being a part of our community.